Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We have ignition. Oh. Safety, 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 level one. Armadillo will handle emergency on the pad. Not sure, but we had uh, we had an abort there. We hear an abort. What can you see on the on the camera? We could hear what sound like a hard start on the engine, uh, a plume of smoke, which is really the uh, engine basically blowing uh, a lot a of small dust. brush fire there, but it's been handled by Armadillo crew. You're on the nozzle. Waiting to hear if Armadillo has uh, capability of flying again during this window. The uh, truck is moving back in. Armadillo uh, ground operations are moving back in to probably inspect the uh, and safety of the vehicle. Okay, emergency status is the vehicle is over it on its side and it is pressurized. The uh, Armadillo crew is, that crew is on the scene and we are going to uh, depressurize and put her upright again for a detank depress. We'll keep you apprised. So welcome back to our, our webcast. Uh, we've uh, Please, John's willing to speak uh, candidly and tell us what happened and what his plans are. So, John's going to turn it over to you. Okay, so we had a burn through on the engine. One of the things that we were concerned... Okay, we had a burn through on the engine, which caused it to shut down just as it was throttling up. And this is one of the six known problems that we had when we came here. Uh, we've had the problems in this entire last week of testing with the valve sometimes not moving, the fuel valve sometimes not moving. We made some adjustments to things uh, and swapped actuators to hopefully get rid of that. And we had done three tests on this particular vehicle before we came here. But we actually saw this exact same problem that almost scrubbed our last flight yesterday on the module, where we had only seen it previously at the ignition point, where that was the last ignition refi there where we command it to uh, to start opening the valves and only the locks valve opens and the fuel valve opens like late or slow and we had only seen this problem before during that sequence but at this point the ignition went fine it came up to idle and then when we throttled up to full uh, full throttle the locks valve moved fast and the fuel valve moved slow so it went really lean and burned through the side and pitched it over so we were looking at that and we have everything that we need if we wanted to go ahead and make another flight but the problem is, this is something that we saw this problem last week. We've been fighting with it for the last two weeks on here. Uh, it almost caused a scrub with the last flight there. And I could make a software change to prevent a burn through here by looking at the valves and never letting them diverge very much. But we could still be in a situation where when it tries to throttle up, instead of burning through there, it would just throttle up very slowly, which would be fine on any of the ascent situations. But when we're descending on the other side, uh, when we're moving down at five meters per second, and I tell it to go ahead and kill the velocity there, it could go ahead and not get enough thrust and slam into the ground pretty hard. So there would be a a failure scenario there that that's pretty credible we're concerned about it so we are deciding not to go ahead and fly in the next window uh, or uh, either of the windows today because we we clearly have an issue here and we wanted just some more time to be able to get to the bottom of it uh, we were we were testing all the different possible electronic side things thinking it might be actuator things but there's and clearly a systemic problem here that we need to get to the bottom of and we we understand the symptoms perfectly and we believe we have a reproducible test case for it that we can do on the bench there but we do not understand the cause of the problem here so it's something that we just need to uh, need to fix before we wind up flying again but the vehicle's still okay it bent one pipe a little bit but uh, it actually was holding pressure on its side fine there when we detanked it so we'll uh, we'll reproof test the vehicle on there uh, as soon as we have a fix for whatever driver problem problem is causing this, then it should be ready to fly again. So, uh, you know, we'd love to come back and do it again next month if we had the opportunity. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see what happens with all that. So, any questions? Questions? Mm -mm. All right. Thank you. All right. 
Thank you, John. So uh, I, I hate to say that concludes the uh, Northrop Grumman Lunar Lander Challenge uh, for 2008, but that is the that is the case. Unless you want to let us run next month. Um, <laughs> uh, and believe me, we have every intention and desire to uh, offer the teams the chance and the windows to do this uh, again soon. Uh, will be uh, uh, Will Pomerantz, who uh, who runs our space uh, team, will be. Uh, we'll be communicating with the teams about how to do this uh, in the 2009 window as soon as, as soon as possible. We'll look, I can tell you, we will look for uh, the mechanisms and consultation with our, our partners at NASA on how to allow this to happen sooner than next October, okay? Uh, 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 we have every desire, to, we know that your vehicle and other vehicles have abilities to fly and we want to get that, we want to get these flights demonstrated as soon as possible. Uh, Will, do you want to add anything on that? So, uh, are there any questions for the XPRIZE Foundation, uh, for our partners at NASA, or for Armadillo at all? <laughs> okay, yes, please. Well, for the most part, I mean, there are a lot of things that can go wrong, and as we, you know, we bump into them, we try to learn from them and not, not have them again. And if we had, if we were aware of this problem more than a week prior, uh, I'm pretty sure we would have had a solution for it. So, I mean, it does, uh, it does come down to the fact that if we had been able to start our testing program on this when we wanted to, there, it's very likely we would have addressed this because we saw all the clues of this going on in the week of testing that we had before the event. Uh, we knew it was a problem, and uh, some of you saw probably saw my list of the half dozen things that if I had more time, I would fix up these things before the event, and this actuator problem was definitely one of them. So uh, it is, you know, we are scratching our heads about why we didn't have this, why this problem seemed to really get serious just uh, on this set of tests. When we did go back and look through telemetry logs, even from previous years, like previous XPRIZE Cup flights, we can see some signs of, uh, of this problem with like a slightly slower fuel valve opening. And we actually had, we were logging current traces that we weren't graphing before. So when we, uh, we actually dug back out a bunch of data that we had from previous year's flights on here, and we could see little signs that it was happening before, but for some reason it got much more serious this year. I mean, it may just be some of the electronics are three years old. I, there might be something that degraded slightly there and it's more of a problem, but we know we've got something that we need to look at. And once we really identify the root cause, you know, we will kill the problem dead. We will, you know, overbuild whatever is necessary to make sure that it's not a on the margin sort of thing. It's going to be something that has, a, you know, a 2x safety margin or more in the future. So, uh, but the core mission of Armadillo on this is we are learning our lessons on these relatively inexpensive things. I mean, we did not do much damage to anything. We are not sending something up that's costing us a million dollars to learn a little uh, a lesson on there or five or ten million dollars. So these are cheap lessons and we think that, you know, the lessons need to be learned and we're learning them in a fairly efficient manner. As you look towards the future with your partnership with, with Rocket Racing, mm -hmm. um, what will the structure be for that sort of Well, it's interesting. Right now, everything is on a hold till we address this problem because the rocket racers use the same uh, electronics drivers uh, and most of the same actuators as what we have here. Uh, so it's this is conce this is something that we saw some signs of this in some of the rocket racer traces. So the possibility of an engine burn through because of a problem like this is there on that system. So everything is essentially grounded till we get to the bottom of this. Uh, all our work for NASA, Rocket Racing League, and uh, any future flights of this until we have a real final solution for it. But the expectation is that uh, we're comfortable with most of the systems on the rocket racers right now. We have a short list, again, of three or four things that we want to add that we don't have on the current prototype. You know, top among them, adding some slosh baffles to their tanks. We're going to add some more filters in front of some of the solenoids because we want a system that nobody's going to have to put a wrench on for a year there. We're going to go ahead and uh, now that we're comfortable with most of the ignition stuff, almost all the components will wind up being welded. I am. You know, <laughs> So there's a few more changes to make over there, but then that system's not going to evolve much. Uh, the idea is that it's a spec racer system. I think the uh, fire department yeah. is uh, doing a celebratory. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, 
but the expectation then is that we take the similar designs, we're making a couple tiny changes to be the baseline for our suborbital vehicle development, which is almost exactly what we've got here with like two more element pairs, which is about what we max out this design at. Uh, we're investigating some new manufacturing capabilities like a rapid prototyping investment casting for the, the chambers uh, and things like that. But we're, we've got a pretty full plate. We've got our NASA methane work to finish up uh, here. Then we've got the, the next two prototypes of the rocket racers to go. Uh, and when windows open for the Lunar Lander Challenge, uh, we will probably drop, you know, drop what we're doing, get the you know, week's worth of testing in after we fix this stuff, go back and take another stab at this because all the numbers are there. We just need to make sure that everything works right and reliably. Um. I feel like a game show host when I say, uh, you know, $350,000, not a bad uh, walk away. <laughs> uh, we hope you'll return next time to go for the million dollar award. <laughs> thank you, John. And thank you to the whole Armadillo team, our partners at NASA, our, our friends here in Las Cruces, and uh, the XPRIZE team for your hard work. And of course, Northrop Grumman. Thank you.